Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social in association with Forge Irish Stout Empire Fight Store. We're here, Frank Smith, who is in Las Vegas for Richardson Hitchens Final Eliminator. How are we, Frank? All good, mate. All good. I'm glad I'm not in England in the rain. The sun is shining in Vegas. Yeah. Or is it not raining? Pissing it down. Oh, well, didn't want to rub it in, but, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm a bit jealous I'm not there, to be honest. But, um, look, let's just touch on... Um, this Saturday, Richardson Hitchens gets his opportunity against a very tough customer, Gustavo Lemos, uh, final eliminator. Looking forward to seeing this fight on Saturday. It's a big opportunity for for both, really, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, huge opportunity. You know, uh, Richardson Hitchens, we believe, is a, a superstar. You know, potential superstar in the sport. He's got all of the the skill set needed. Um, and, you know, that's why we signed him. You know, he, he's been with Mayweather Promotions, obviously, for a long time. And we saw that he had massive opportunity. You know, he's going in there, IBF final eliminator. You know, he'll be challenging for the world title next. You know, obviously, we've got Subriel Matias fights Liam Paro for that title. But that's yes. you know, that's the focus for, for Richardson Hitchens. He goes in there against Lemos, who's a, a brilliant fighter. We saw him when he fought Lee Selby, obviously, yeah. at the weight weight below I think he was in a final eliminator um and you know he's a big puncher and I also think it's good because you know he got some stick Richardson in his last fight against Cepeda around the style of the fight but yeah. I think Lemos will bring out something a bit different from him and he's going to have to fight in this fight and it, it'll be you know good to see how he deals with that is this one of them sort of like gap bridges between, you know, when he finally makes that step up to, you mentioned there, obviously, Subriel Matisse, and when he sat, and obviously Paro, when he starts making that jump, is this a good fight to sort of gauge where he's at? 100%. It's the kind of fight he needs to step up to that level. But look, respect to him, because there was other routes he could have gone Richardson to get to a world title. Yep. Um, a lot of people didn't want to fight Subriel Matias. Liam Paro has shown he will. But, you know, Richardson was willing to take that challenge. He knows that that is, you know, Look, he, he's got to fight Liam Parry first, but when he took this opportunity, it was obviously all he was focused on was Subriel Matias because that was the fight. You know, if he won, that's what that was on was on the other side. So respect to him for taking that. What a fight, by the way, that is. Um, Paro Matisse, that's um, just Liam Paro coming off as well. An excellent victory. Um, these are the type of fights we want in boxing. That is a proper banger of a fight. Yeah, look, I mean, great win against Montana Love, as you say, uh, Liam Paro last time out. Um, he's had a frustrating time because he had a bit of time out of the ring. He went straight back in there in a real fight, you know, in a real test. So it was great to see. Um, and yeah, it's a brilliant fight. June 15th, Puerto Rico, somewhere new for us to go and try out as well. Um, and I don't think from Subriel's perspective, he is such a brilliant fighter, but he's never really been built in the right manner. And I think you know, we're looking forward to doing a job with him because he's got all of the ability, all of the talent. Um, he's got the personality. He looks good. You know, it's our job now to take him to that next level. But a great fight. And it looked great to deliver an opportunity for Liam Power as well to fight for a world title. Yeah, 100%. And in a different location as well. Something new you mentioned there. Um, look, got to come on to it. I'm sure you're going to be peppered with questions. Wait, before you do, I just want to say, obviously, the rest of the card on Saturday as well. Diego wow. Pacheco, you know, in, a, in a, another test, we believe Diego is a superstar for the future. I know you want to get on to, like, the shits there in Paul's Trouble you know, get me in trouble stuff. But, you know, first, Diego Pacheco, brilliant, brilliant fighter. I think this is, you know, another, this is the perfect fight he needs as he steps on, you know, because he'd go in with the big names tomorrow. Um, yep. Sky Nicholson fights for a world title, you know, uh, so great opportunity for her. Galawia Fire steps up again and, you know, the kind of fights he needs if he wants to start challenging for world yep. titles next year. And Mark Castro in his first championship fight. 100%. Just touch on that just a little bit then, obviously. Sky Nicholson, for however many months as well, been calling out the likes of a, a Serrano. She believes her style beats. I know she's got um, a test on Saturday and she's got to win that fight, but down the line, if she gets that belt, does that become more realistic? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's a massive fight. That would be a, a huge fight and a fight she wanted to take as well. You know, if um, I think if Serrano wouldn't have vacated the belts, I know there's the yeah. discussion on 10, 12 rounds, etc. But, you know, she would have taken that fight. Um, so it's definitely something for the future. 100%. And um, look, I'll get on to the quote-unquote shit stirring, like you've said, but it's just going to be questions. Um, ben Shalom, obviously, on TalkSpot today. Um, the headline read on YouTube, you know, Eddie call me, as in, we're willing to work. Um, in relation to comments made by Dalton and Eddie, Ben was very keen to say, look, um, we got a lot of scrutiny over... 
Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, and look, the event spoke for itself. And he said Xbox has knew that it was a good decision at the time to wait. And while we're coming under basically under pressure for not having these fights, it proved to be the right decision. What are your thoughts on them comments from Ben's point of view? Of course he'd say that. You know, and it like look, of course he'd say that coming off the back of the weekend. It was a great fight. It was a great fight. But look, Fraser Clark, whether he had one or two more fights, I think he's an experienced fighter. He's been in there with some of the best in the world, both at amateur, both in you know, in sparring over the last few years. Um you know, he sits there saying, I did the best for, for my fighter. I don't think his fighter was too happy at the time that he got pulled out of a purse bid that would have made him life-changing money because basically just didn't suit Ben Shalom. It's not about the fighter. He's like, that's the reality. I'm just being honest. It was, it was That decision wasn't made because of, to help Fraser Clark with a better chance to win the fight. Again, just be honest. It was about Sir and Sky. Yeah. Because, and the reason I say that is because I know a lot of people who know Fraser Clark very well. I know Fraser Clark very well. He yeah. wouldn't, he wanted that fight. So, if that, exactly. so is that, is that them then from your point of view? And I'm putting words in your mouth, concerned about that fight going to a different platform rather than anything. All else. it is, it's not, it's not about I've got to do the best for my fight. Don't get me wrong. There, I don't disagree with the Adam Azim decision not being ready with, for Dalton Smith. That's not, I'm not saying if I, if we, maybe we would do the same thing, but you do it at a time that didn't embarrass him for a month and drag things out. That I was going to come on to this next. So the, I saw the whole sort of back and forth and everyone having the conversation, but the crux of it is, and this didn't, I don't think this is something that really got picked up on. This fight was ordered for the European a while back now. They've had, you know, there was long enough period. Is it for you guys at your end? At the start, it's, look, let's see if the fight gets made. Then it progresses to, we're still waiting. And then it progresses to, have you no confidence? Is this a case of, if you do this a bit quicker, all this is avoidable kind of thing? Yeah, look, they put him in the position. They wanted him to fight for the European title. What comes with winning titles is that you have mandatories. That's the obligation. Yeah. And when you move at that level, it all runs alongside that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all part and parcel of being a champion. You get ordered to fight someone. Um, so... You know, it says about like Adam Azim go on to superstar level. Like, like I don't know Adam Azim. He's obviously he's very talented. He's twenty one years old. He could be very good. He could you know could build on to become a superstar. Could become a pay per view fighter. Who knows? Who knows? Like who knows? But at the same time, Harlem Eubank, even though that fight's not actually done, can beat Adam Azim. For and and Adam Azim will be getting a third of the money. Yeah, than he would to fight Dalton Smith. So. You know, like we can all sit here and say it's for the good of the fighter. It's nothing to do in the, this instance. And Fraser Clark, it's not to do with the good of the fighter. They've done it because it makes sense for them and it makes sense for their broadcast. In boxing, we always see these fights that get touted for years and sometimes a slip up between, for one or the other. I mean, not as much in the last 18 months with obviously the introduction to Saudi. We've seen big fights, but in terms of the domestic scene, these two, we often see these fights sometimes fall by the wayside because either one takes a defeat or this or that happens. Um, obviously, Ben speaking about the business side, saying in a few fights' time, well, obviously bigger fights, bigger money, and he did reference that you know it'd almost be like them doing Dalton Smith a favor in terms of like a commercial value and stuff like that. What are your thoughts on that? Look, I'm not with all due respect to Adam Zim again. Not talking him down. He seems like a nice kid, like nice guy. So, like, I'm not saying this to be detrimental. He didn't even headlight. He went on the undercard of the last mm -hmm. show he was on. He's not a superstar. He's just, he's a good fighter. You know, they, they create, built this perception around him and they're telling him as a superstar and they're saying he's a superstar. That's great. But he's not really. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the, so, like, doing Dalton Smith favor. Doesn't do Dalton Smith favor. Dalton Smith's been headlining his own shows in Sheffield, been doing great numbers, you know, and he's a, a, you know, a much higher level now than Adam Azim. So, you know, it's just that it comes back to every time the this the platform, this, that, the other, and then at the end of it, he's begging to have a phone call with Eddie. You know, so what do you obviously in terms of Frank Warren, Eddie, match from Queensbury, the Saudi sort of uh, wedged that gap. Obviously, I know George Warren's had a huge impact in you know that relationship and being the glue between kind of thing. But are we going to see a scenario where? You know, Ben's saying, look, let's have let's have a phone call, let's have this. And, you know, 
whether there's good intentions there or not, do you think we'll see a scenario where maybe you guys, you know, meet with Ben or have a chat and go, look, how do we move this forward? What do we do? Yeah, but look, if people bring up the Saudi element and the, the match in working with Queensbury now, we always did fight, like, look at John Ryder against Zach Parker, for example. That was before the Saudis were involved in boxing. So I think that the difference was we were always all sensible about doing business. It was just there was no relationship and it was a lot of shit talking about each other, you know. But we still did business, you know. So it didn't it didn't come in and then all of a sudden we did our first deal ever. We'd never sat at the table together sitting, talking about how we can work together close more closely. Because at the same time, we're we're competitors. That's what we do. Yeah. You know, but we still did business with each other and we made fights happen when it made sense. Um and we didn't Queensbury didn't pull people out of purse bids because they'd fought out like you know that was just it we weren't best of friends yeah. do you know what I mean but in terms of the whole discussion now of about us with Boxer we've had fighters fight on Boxer shows it's not okay. us and yeah. people you know like the problem is as well is the the conversation is all surrounded by all this right and people go oh look they won't stop talking about it you're like we just get asked questions about it and give an honest opinion of, oh, yeah. yeah yeah but give an honest opinion of of the situation the landscape and the truth is they're desperate you know look they you know they got they haven't delivered really for sky like i see they the posting about viewing figures this that the other yeah. they haven't delivered the pay per view you know and, and and the reality is the business when we were with sky what they wanted was pay per view shows that deliver massive numbers. We did that. We've broken multiple pay-per-view records with Sky time and time again. And boxing's never was never what it was to Sky today. But it wasn't at the forefront of their Sky Sport. They weren't doing what they do today. That's just the reality of it. So, you know, look, we will work with anyone if it makes sense for our fighters. We are about our fighters at the end of the day, delivering the best possible opportunity. A lot of people say it, but don't actually mean it. You know, so you know that's. Let's see, let's see. No worries. Um, a couple more from me. Um, I know Eddie in an interview with IFL said Anthony Joshua. Um, very likely fights for a world heavyweight title next. I saw Derek Chisora also say, um, with IFL that the plan is for Anthony Joshua to fight um at Wembley. You confirm, deny, or any say anything on that for AJ? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I think let's see what happens May 18th as well. Anything could happen in that fight. Anything the the the, hand, the 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 landscape of the heavyweight division changes daily. And you know what could what we could be talking about today in April for September could change tomorrow. So I think let's see. There's lots of exciting things ahead in the heavyweight division. Um that undisputed fight May 18th and a very important factor around it all. And then we go from there. Do you foresee any scenario where potentially after the first fight, there is potential step aside, so we get undisputed if Tyson Fury is to win. It's for him and Joshua. I don't, I don't know, but I think more like someone not being ready, time frame. You know, like there's so many things in there that could happen in the sport and in heavyweight fo- boxing that make make a big difference. There's maybe there's a fight today that doesn't make sense, but might do in four months time, five months time. You know, like I don't yeah. know who, who would have thought Joshua would have fought Ungano. No. You know, Mark, like, so I think it's so difficult. I think we have to see how the, how, how the landscape plays out over the next month or so. Um, all we can say is Anthony Joshua wants the biggest possible fight. He's in the form of his life, and I believe he'll become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world sometime soon. Okay. Well, look, Frank, um, I appreciate you giving us some of your time over there from Las Vegas. Um, wish I was there. Um, but yeah, um, let's catch up soon. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Cheers, boys. Thank you.